going on here. That's all going on. Uh, <coughs> stories. Um, I don't want to get started in the stories, but I just want to say that um, I want to stress the importance of what's happening today in, in this community, uh, the vision that has been seen and the collaboration of all the people coming together, the leadership of uh, Dr. White and others. I think um, when we take a look at the, the draft report, things such as the rock, where the rock was situated, where um, Chief Buffalo said one mile square from that rock, which is located down on First Avenue West in Michigan Street. And before that, it was all swamp land there. So we get a, a deeper understanding of what this area was like um, before the encroachment of the Euro, uh, Euro um, European nations. Um, other things that we think about there is uh, from the draft report is something to say like the St. Louis, Fort St. Louis, which was on the bay, um, and the construction of somebody, uh, a guy by the name of Jean-Baptiste Perrault, who happens to be, we know, Sid Perrault, that's his great-great-grandfather. So he was instrumental in building that fort there, but there's some irony there also, because that was the site of the first um, execution in Minnesota, which was uh, an Ojibwe man. So these things are, are um, out there in this report, some of those things, that they, um, and then we said that the Civic Center is really reservation land, reserved land, and it was clouded title, and it still is today. And you still see people uh, look uh, in a filibustered way when you say these truths, because we've heard so much lies, mm -hmm. lies after lies after lies. Now it's time for the truth to come out. Yes, it is. Anishinaabe, yeah. live natural law and spiritual law, and tell the truth. So we have in collaboration, we have that uh, helping us, uh, those ones in, around us that we're surrounded with. So I think that um, the importance of that, you hear about uh, the development that's happening down here in a, in a Norwegian Nordic way. Now we as Anishinaabe welcome all people to our lands. They say this is the Anishinaabe Akiminan, you're in Ojibwe country. We have much respect for Dakota Nation who was here and moved and shifted, there's been that through time. But we, we so we not talk disparagingly of the, the Nordic nation or Norwegians and such, but they have their plenty of icons, temporal icons that are around, the statues and things. So we have to have an opportunity here. Now the relationship with the city of Duluth is sometimes in a rocky way like this, and it's up and down and stuff like that, but the naming of roads, trails, parks, is in the process, and it's happening. We just have to continue that dialogue with the city and force them to do these things. It's the right thing to do. And uh, so I think it's really a <coughs> tremendous opportunity that's going on here today. And, um, and also working in collaboration with the University of Minnesota Duluth, we have in our midst here Dr. Jim Amell here, who's helping the Indigenous Commission with the study here, and he raises a hand here, Dr. Amell. Um, <clears throat> so we're grateful for this, because when we see a different way of seeing things, instead of a needs-based, we look for the strength-based. Nishinaabe always has many, many strengths. And we, put them out there front and we leave with our strengths. Rather than the old way of looking at things, we need this, we need that. So it's a different way of viewing things and we welcome those that think like us. So the importance of what's going on here today is really significant. I encourage you to get the opportunity to come to the Indigenous Commission uh, meetings, which are on the third Monday at about 5.15 um, to begin. Uh, so. Please show up, come with your ideas, suggestions, and things, and, um, and move, help move our Indigenous Commission members. Uh, <clears throat> and I see our, um, our brothers that belong to this grandfather drum here are getting seated here. 
And we're going to ask uh, those men in a kind way, because when we think about Anakobiji Ganak, our ancestors, and the significance of not only descendancy, but who we are as a people, uh, connected to this land. Uh, the elders say that the blood, flesh, and bones of our ancestors make up the topsoil that surrounds this, the great sea of the Ojibwe. So when we hear about the, the moving of the cemeteries and stuff like this, the, so we are true. That is a metaphor, but it's the truth. Anishinaabe and the Dakota Nation and other nations, indigenous, make up the topsoil here. It's only been 500 years, only 500 years that the European nations and other nations have come here. So we have to think about not only our leaders here today, but also the ones of the past, our ancestors. And we're going to ask in a kind, humble way if our brothers here can render a song to honor our ancestors of the past. <laughs> Oh, in it now. 